G'day everyone, I'm Jazza and in this video I am on a mission to create the cutest character design possible. Ask you guys on Twitter who is the cutest cartoon puppet comic character of all time? Why? Go! Huge amount of responses here so I'm gonna go through all of them and create a bit of a mood board. By the way, if you ever want to participate in these things, I tend to very randomly like ask a question like this on Twitter and, it, and it's an easy way to get involved in a video or help out or have a bit of fun with me. So follow me on Twitter at Josiah Brooks. Jesse Hammond suggests Stitch. Very cute character from Lilo and Stitch. Mew, huh? Let's slap Mew in our mood board here. And Xin says, you! <laughs> stop, stop. It's flattering, but it's simply not true. Except for when I use my TikTok filters. Look, this is a beauty. I'm gonna press the beauty mode. Is it on? Cut tell. <laughs> oh, look at this. There's one. Oh, oh, look at me. Oh, boy. Ah! No! No, no! This is not cute! What? Oh, yeah, that's pretty cute. <laughs> oh, look at me. I'm cute. I'm, I'm, I'm a little cutie. I'm gonna post that because I haven't posted in TikTok in ages. There it is, I posted. Oh, what? 117,000 TikTok followers? What was I doing? Oh yeah, mood board. Whoops, sorry, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> uh, oh, Wally's, Wally's pretty cute. I mean, so is Evie as well. So let's, uh, let's copy this. There you go, there's my, there's Wally and Eve. Evie, whatever, whatever it is. Eve. We've got Pikachu, we've got, obviously a lot of Pokemons could fit on this, this mood board, but I think Pikachu's definitely one of the original cuties. Pikachu, there you go. But no more Pokemon. That's it. It's enough for you. Luke is the spider is a is a spider, which by most people's accounts, except for weird people. Mwah, cutie. What makes him cute? That's what we're gonna be dissecting and using. Ha! Baby Yoda. There's something about Baby Yoda that has captured the hearts and imaginations of everyone. Baby Yoda, absolutely adorable. Fifel from Fifel Goes West and other Fifel based <laughs> movies, I forget all of them, but here's another great example. So let's start to break down what some of those traits are. So here are the main ones that stand out in nearly all of them. Big dark eyes, big head, sort of like chibi proportions. And chibi of course being the, the manga slash anime style that accentuates the proportions that essentially we're breaking Breaking down here. All right, there you go. There's a cute little chippy character there. Oh, look at you, little woo you. You know, it's a good uh, level of cuteness when words start turning into mumble jumbles. Oh, you, boo, you, you, go, boo. Yeah, that's when you know you're hitting the right spot. Now, obviously, Stitch is an exception here, but a lot of them I'm noticing a small mouth, tiny hands, and I actually think there's got to be an element of color. Not always. Again, there are exceptions to all of this. They all have a fairly strong color about them. Rosy cheeks, big ears. I think they're my basic notes. I'm gonna use these as a rough guide and follow my mood board for inspiration. I'm gonna play around with all sorts of combinations of these and uh, hopefully I'll end up with a handful that I think are pretty strong contenders. Until out of them, I'll pick the winning one to polish up and push out. That sounds weird, That not a good way to say that. Let's get started. <laughs> Before jumping into designing characters, I wanted to play with the elements and options of cuteness to see what I preferred and which lent themselves to the most cute appeal possible, starting off with the head and body proportions. Clearly the bigger the head and the smaller the body, the cuter the character in general. It's really easy to see with these three sketches lined up that the one on the right has the most cute factor of the three. Now, as I mentioned, there will always be exceptions to this rule, but it is the rule for a reason. I mean, look at him. Look, he's so cute. It's just freaking silhouette. <laughs> Next, the eyes, which is interesting because I assumed that the first pair I drew would be the cutest, but actually I found that the simpler, the better. Now I'm sure it depends heavily on the character. Big eyes may not always be appealing, for example, but I was quickly learning that simplicity pretty much always is appealing. As you can see with the hands I drew, all of them are cute, but the simplicity of the one that I've outlined where there are no clear indications of where the wrist is makes it kind of marshmallowy. But I also thought that the hand having tiny fingers was cuter than the super simple mitten style hand. I think because they're just that little bit more human, but the cutest possible version of human hands. Finally with the mouths, again simplicity and tininess were the things I found most effective. So next I tried to put these elements in context figuring I'd start with humans and break away with each page. This first page I drew kids as cute as possible throwing in different elements and expressions but I couldn't shake the feeling that I was designing a generic cute dolly. One of those stupid toy babies that you feed a bottle to and when you squeeze they say mama. 
As cute as some of them were, they seemed to be trying too hard to be cute. So I moved on to a new page with more animalistic attempts at cuteness, keeping them reasonably human in their features, but simplifying the detail, adding little features to make them less human. I also broke away from the more conventional human head shape where possible, but something was irking me. I didn't care about any of these characters or designs, even as a starting point. None of them spoke to me as being cute enough to further develop. So I tried to push it further in the next page. This time I was playing with more extreme head shapes, animal bases and head proportions, but just a handful of sketches in, I knew I was approaching this the wrong way, which got me thinking about cuteness and why we attach to the characters we think of as cute in the first place. And then I was struck with a sudden powerful realization Okay, so I'm stopping my process here because I've actually had a bit of a realization and that is that there's no such thing as objective cuteness. <sighs> cuteness relies on context and if I'm just trying to create cuteness in a vacuum, it's not gonna work. So yeah, I might take these elements like big dark eyes, big head, small mouth, tiny hands, strong car, blah, blah, blah. But these are, these are ingredients that you can use to mix and create your flavor. All of these characters that you see here have a context that amplifies their cuteness and also often a juxtaposition or something opposing that our expectations have that it then subverts. Baby Yoda is cute and everyone, everyone knows Yoda and so I think in the context of everyone knowing Yoda as the wise, old, slightly quirky space goat, when you then take that and make the baby cute version, which no one's ever seen before, oh my God! there's no winning! So if I invent something, even if it is very visually cute and I can create a context, I can't in this video win you over and create a story that's gonna outdo the nostalgia and the attachment that we have with these characters. It's actually not possible. Unless I take a story and I take a context that exists and then I subvert that with these tools that at the moment, though there are some things that are definitely working in the cuteness realm of things, subjectively aren't cuter than these characters. I need to pick something that I can make cute out of so that cuteness can be conveyed. I'm gonna actually interject here with a random plug. I'm realizing obviously it's been a couple of years since I've done a proper character design session, which frankly this has sort of turned out to be, but also because it's been a couple of years since I've plugged my book, which means that there will be people watching this who don't know I actually have a book on character design. So if you find this stuff really interesting and you like the way that I present it, you're gonna love the book. That's why I wanted to just bring it up and just share it with you. It's called Draw with Jazza Creating Characters. And I'm gonna put the link in the description. And as you can see with just a little bit of footage of me flipping through the book here. It actually goes through the steps of the design process that not only am I going through in this video, but I go through in every phase of design that I go through, whether it be for characters or logos or whatever. It's going through that exploration, research, then planning and playing around, developing and refining, and then finally executing a final polished result. So if you love watching that process and you wanna learn more about it, and you also like the way I share it, go check it out. It's a support to the channel, of course, but most of all, I'm hoping it's a big support to you. So links in the description and uh, back to the video. In the animal kingdom, there is very little uglier or more unappealing than the blobfish. Look at it. Ew! I mean, gross! I mean, it's like a wreckage of creation you can't look away from. But I thought the feelings of repulsion for something that looks like this might be a great starting point to create a cute design out of. Hear me out! I think especially because it's visually simple as a creature, but also because using that base of emotion to juxtapose might be really effective. So I sketched out a few mixes of features and proportions and I found that again, simplicity is king. And I also liked the way that the big eyes made the character look. So rather than beady and gaunt, it looked more plump and a little bit derpy. Next, the king of the dinosaurs, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which in most representations are badass, terrifying, and powerful. I thought the adorable version would be pretty compelling. So I sketched out rough proportions for a normal T-Rex to visualize the elements I'd accentuate, and the rest I would shrink and soften. 
in the end opting for a really large soft and goofy snout and nose with a massive underbite and cute rounded teeth underneath the top jaw but then also for the body a really plump lower body almost making the weight of the character sit like a pear or almost like a squishy water balloon actually like with most of the mass in the legs the tail and that butt. Next I thought it was time to play around with an actual existing character and I chose Quasimodo from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I mean think about it, the character's whole story is that he's ugly. However, his animated design is made to be appealing enough for us as viewers to like him and want to watch him. So I set about making a baby Quasimodo, figuring out how to keep the same elements of ugliness that made the character who he is, but amp up the cuteness enough that you'd want to do nothing more than blow raspberries on his tummy and pinch his cheeks. Next, I picked another character, but with a different emotional foundation. Pure terror and disgust. None other than Pennywise the Clown. People love to be freaked out by this clown. And with such a brilliant design in the recent movies and a performance that has people shuddering when they think about him, I thought an adorable version would serve as a tickle of relief to the viewer for the cute version. I played around with the features of the face and found again that simplicity was absolutely critical to making him cute. I mean, if I kept the shape of his mouth or cheeks or proportions of the head too reminiscent of the original, too much of that creep factor would very quickly sneak in. People are just too ready to be creeped out by Pennywise. So chubby and simple were my mantras, as were minimizing the size of his mouth and smile while emphasizing big round eyes and a big soft forehead. Last but not least, my avatar. I mean, you're watching my channel and I've drawn him a thousand times. There's enough context for most of you viewers to have some kind of emotional response to seeing him, be it irritation or amusement. An adorable version would surely feel fresh and fun and different and hopefully cute. But this was trickier than I expected as I found making the eyes too big or the hair too small, the character would just sort of look like a baby. And for this design, I didn't want him to look like an infant, just a super cute version of the same character. But by turning the eyes into little shiny buttons and then keeping the general silhouette intact but just softening and widening it and also sitting things proportionally lower in the face, I got much closer to a version that I thought was pretty gosh diddly darn cute. If, I don't, if, if you don't mind if I don't do say so myself. Here we are at the end of my attempt to create the cutest character ever drawn. And not only do I feel like I've had a pretty good swing at that, I've actually drawn five, as you saw, starting off with the Blobfish. Oh my god, he's disgusting and adorable. And he's only adorable because Blobfish are disgusting. I really feel like that was quite the uh, realization today. Here we have the T-Rex. We've seen cute and cartoony T-Rexes before, so it's not a new concept, but I wanted to see if I could make it as cute as possible. And I think he's pretty cute there. But I actually think the most effective ones are the ones based on characters because they have a story. Quasimodo is a character that people no, he has a story and he's a very likable character. So baby Quasimodo has all that likability and the, the feelings people have about the Hunchback of Notre Dame, but he's so cute, look at him, and you wouldn't think to have a baby Quasimodo, but there was a, he was raised in the, you could totally do a baby Quasimodo series and it would be freaking awesome. Pennywise is not 
appealing. I mean, he's an appealing villain, but he's not someone you would ever, 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 ever call cute. Look at me, he loves his little balloon. <laughs> but do you know who may be the cutest of them all? Me. <laughs> I did think it was a fun experiment just to see how I would reinvent the Jazza Avatar character if the only goal would be to make him cute based on the previous design. And as you know, anyone who's been around this channel for a long time knows I've drawn this guy a lot. So he comes associated mentally with a lot of shenanigans and a lot of stuff on this channel and just sort of creativity in general. So this is where I want to hand it off to you guys because I attempted to create the cutest character ever and I've got five here. I'm going to open up a poll in the card and you have five options to tell me who you think is the cutest. Blobfish is option one. T-Rex is option two. Then we have Quasimodo who, as you know, has a story, has a name, and now is friggin' adorable. Option four, Pennywise, and then option five, the Jazza Avatar. Go vote in the card. Let me know in the comments who is your favorite. And this has been a really fun exercise, so let me know in the comments some other characters you'd like to see made absolutely adorable and maybe That'll be a future video. But for now, I want to thank you for watching this video. I sincerely hope you've enjoyed it. And I have had a blast making these reinterpretations and inventions of cute characters. And maybe one of them is the cutest character ever drawn. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more fun with art and creativity. And ring that bell so you don't miss out on a future video. There are more videos you might enjoy over there. Otherwise, that's it for now. And until next time, I'll see you later. I'm <laughs> sorry.